Welcome to the second presentation in Unit 3 entitled School Work. The only place success comes before work in the dic is in the dictionary, Vince Lombardi. So the learning goals for this presentation are that you be able to identify the factors necessary for physical work to occur, that you distinguish between work and power, and use the formulas below. So here's what we already know. We already know that energy is defined as the ability to do work. It's the action energy. We also know that energy is conserved. In other words, the energy you get out has to come from somewhere. So here's what we learned in the lab. We learned that students exert a greater force do more work. So work is directly tied to the amount of force that you do. We also know that students that exert the same force over a greater distance do more work. So work is a combination of force and distance. And that students do the, uh, the students to do a task in less time have greater power. So students that do a task in less time have greater power. So we also know that work is the action energy has force and movement. So work requires force and movement. So the question is, is school work really work? If you're taking something and you're writing across a page, does that really constitute physical work? The work equation is work equals force times displacement. And we've worked with force before, and we've worked with distance before. So we know that they're measured in newtons and meters. And we know that the SI unit for any energy is the joule. So because of that, we know that work equals force times displacement. So the fundamental question that we have here says work, street, work is a unit of energy. What should the units of work be reported in? And that is, of course, the joule. Now, does the person below do work in moving the car? Uh, and the answer is the person does not do work, but the engine of the car does. So it's kind of a trick question. The person pushes down on the gas pedal, but the car and pushes down on the gas pedal, but the car is what actually makes it move forward. So the engine of the car is what applies the force which moves it forward. So the person doesn't do any work. That is le unless, of course, there's somebody who's actually pushing the car in that direction. So it says determine the force, uh, determine the work needed to apply a 100 newton force on an object uh, moving at 5 meters. So it should say determine the work, determine the work to apply a 100 newton force an object moving at 5 meters. So we're going to apply work is what we're looking for. Force is equal to 100 newtons. And then the displacement is 5 meters. So because of that we can say that work equals force times distance, or 100 times 5. At this point, we would use our calculator. We'd say 5 times 100 is 500, and our unit is the joule. Finally, it says calculate the force exerted on a box when it requires 500 joules to move the 10 kilogram box a total of 25 meters. So we are looking for the force in this case. We have the work, and we have the distance. The distance is 25 meters. The total amount of work is 500 joules. And then what you'll notice is that this 10 kilograms is irrelevant to our discussion. At no point does the mass come anywhere in our formula. Work equals force times distance. So we would say 500 equals F times 25. At this case, we would divide both sides by 25. And when we divide both sides by 25, you'd end up getting an answer of 20, um, excuse me, 20 newtons of force. Power is the rate at which energy is used, and it depends um, It depends on energy, work, and time. So a 60-watt light bulb is brighter than a 100-watt light bulb, and you see that if you actually plug them in right next to each other. The 100-watt light bulb puts out a lot more light every second than the 60-watt light bulb does. The units of power, the SI unit of power is the watt. There are other common ones, um, units of power, and those are calories per hour. You see that a lot if you look at a treadmill or something along those lines, a stair-stepping machine. They tell you how many calories per hour you're burning. A lot of times you also see BTUs per hour, and that tends to be with things like grills or major appliances tend to be those sorts of things. You also see horsepower. Horsepower is generally associated with cars. Um, you know, how many horsepower does the engine put out, those sorts of things. The power equation is P equals W over T, where W is really work, but it could be any type of energy. It could be electrical energy, it could be heat. So really, by putting work there, what we're saying is any energy would actually go there. 
You have T, which is time, which we've dealt with before. And we have P, which is the new one, which is a capital P, and it stands for power. And power is the rate at which energy is transferred, and the unit is the watt. So now, direct energy is an example of a company that supplies electricity to your house, or they call it a power company or an energy company. Now, a lot of times people will call them the power company, but actually what they supply to your house is they supply energy. They actually measure you in some, or they send you a bill based on something that's in kilowatt hours. In kilowatt hours, people say, well, that's a watt, that's a unit of power. And it is a unit of power, that's true. But a unit of a watt is really energy per time. And when we multiply it by time, those cancel out, and a kilowatt hour is really a unit of energy. And it can be really, really confusing. But just know that anytime an electricity company supplies you with power, they're not supplying you with power, they're supplying you with energy. Next, this is all three light bulbs shown below are plugged into the power strip. Which light bulb has the greatest power? And so you have to look at it in terms of the brightness. This one is the brightest. So we're going to say that this one has the highest power. This one is next. And this one gives off the least power. It's kind of tough to tell the difference between these two, but this one is clearly brighter than the other two. Next, this is what is the power of a weightlifter who lifts a barbell with 250 joules of work in four seconds. So we're looking for the power. Power is question mark. We know the work is 250 joules, and we know the time is four seconds. So we can say power is equal to work over time. Or in our case, we can say that power is equal to 250 divided by 4. Okay, at this point, you would have to take your calculator out, and you'd say 250 divided by 4 gives you something on the order of power being 62.5 watts. And finally, we have determined the time and finally, we have determined the time required for a 60 watt light bulb to give off 50,000 joules of energy. So we have 60 watts and 50,000 joules of energy, which means we have power is 60 watts. We have work is 50,000 joules. And finally, we want to solve for the time. We say P equals W over T. And in this case, we plug in, we get 60 equals 50,000 over T. So at this point, you need to use algebra. You multiply both sides by t, and when you do that, these cross out, leaving 60t equals 50,000. Now you divide both sides by 60, and at this point, you would go to your calculator. You would say t equals 50,000 divided by 6. So 50,000 divided by 60 ends up being about 833 seconds. Okay, 833 seconds is roughly... 14 minutes, so in about 14 minutes of leaving a 60 watt light bulb on, you've used over 50,000 joules of energy.